uh, Marty Kendall, and we're somewhere in the Whit Sunday Islands enjoying the low carb cruise 2016. So, are you enjoying yourself, Marty? Loving it, loving it. Yeah. Snorkeling. Beautiful fish. You threw a shot. Yeah, well, that was, cool. that was when I was diving a week ago. Jules. Yeah, we just went up near Hayman Island. Mm. Is that right? Mm. It's beautiful, beautiful spot. Welcome to Australia, dude. Yeah, I'm it's been fun. really happy to be here. Mm. It's a blast. So you gave a talk yesterday. It was fun. Great uh, opportunity. You're Mr. Optimizing mm. Nutrition. Mr. Yep. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, well, I started just dabbling with low carb and trying to help improve her blood sugar control through understanding what makes insulin go up and down. And uh, yeah, came across some interesting ideas and documented and yeah. started over blog. So, so yeah. what's, what's the basic premise of optimizing nutrition? Um, well, the first thing is understanding what, as I said, drives insulin and uh, found some interesting data that helps us to more accurately predict that based on the fiber and the protein as well as carbohydrate. So then we can uh, better refine that for people who are trying to manage uh, cancer or, or, or epilepsy or trying to actively manage a ketogenic diet. Yeah. Then we can, uh, you know, people just with diabetes can more intentionally manage the food that they eat to, 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 to better manage the situation. So once we understand what makes, what requires insulin and what drives blood sugar up quantitatively, we can then optimize our food to, uh, to, to, to better suit that person. Yeah, well, you know, there's, there's kind of three basic... Uh, hey, you nuts. saw the talk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah tell us yeah. about it. Yeah, yeah, so, so the three components are yeah. insulin load, nutrient density, and energy density. So for someone who's very insulin resistant, they need to drop the insulin load of their diet. Um, for someone who's healthy, they can focus on the nutrient density. And for someone who's insulin sensitive, but still needs to lose some weight, then they can just focus on a lower energy density diet, which tends to be a very uh, nutrient dense approach as well. And, and you can tweak it somewhere between those extremes for different people to suit different goals. So. Right, so it's not, you, you have three choices. You, you have yeah. to, to find it. So I, I think there are, the, the, there are different situations and typically you've got someone who's aiming for therapeutic ketosis, diabetes management, uh, weight loss or just someone who's really healthy and wants to get the best food they can get which is the just maximize nutrient density. Yeah, so where do you go about getting data for this? Um, yeah, well, there's a study, uh, actually a PhD thesis from the University of Sydney that I found mm -hmm. that uh, documented all the insulin load so I just downloaded that, dropped it into a spreadsheet, did my own number crunching on it to work out how to manage my wife's type 1 a little bit better. and. Um, the nutrient databases from the US USDA food database of about eight thousand different foods. Yeah. So, yeah. So for your for your wife, what's yeah. the tweak? What's the tweak? For my wife who's type one, we yeah. don't want like we know insulin drives blood sugar down and uh, and when she, when it goes down in a hurry when you have to use a lot of insulin you end up in a low and it's just a roller coaster all day. So the idea is to minimize the insulin load of that her diet. So she's not on that roller coaster all day. Yeah. So basically, a lower insulin load diet, not to the point of being therapeutic keto ketogenic. Yeah. But sort of a, a, a lower insulin load. Okay. So yeah. how do you tweak her nutrient density at the same time? <laughs> um, so you can sort of balance those two priorities. So using what you know, engineers nerd out and uh, use a multi-criteria analysis, they can. Uh, prioritize both nutrient density and the lower insulin load at the same time because yeah. I think if you're just eating fat, if you're just eating very low uh, insulin load foods, you end up with a not so nutrient dense approach. So you need to, especially if you're going for a low carb approach, you also need to be very intentional and prioritize a, uh, a, a nutrient dense approach. Right, so you, I think I heard you say that, you, you know, uh, fat isn't necessarily nutrient dense. Uh, uh, Omega-3s are important, there's yeah. lots of NCTs that are really fantastic, but uh, they don't contain vitamins and minerals and amino acids as much that we also really need. Like the, yeah. the, the Krebs cycle, every step of the Krebs cycle needs an amino acid to drive it. Um, or our mitochondria, which I think are yeah. immensely critical, um, need aminos and vitamins and minerals to, to drive them and to function optimally. So I think perhaps um, you know, we're all talking about 
you know, not using insulin and, and insulin uh, sensitivity being a big deal. Yeah. If you step one further, step further back, I think it's about mitochondrial function and I think your mitochondria adapts to the quality of food you give it. So if you're not feeding, you're not fueling it well, they slow down. Yeah. So. What, what about fat, fat soluble vitamins? There's some. Yeah, that, that, that's an interesting discussion. Yeah. And, and, and uh, you know, do you need, uh, you know, fat to absorb vitamin K and A and E and yeah and therefore it's good to have a combination of food that you're eating so not just plant based not just animal based but a well rounded experience so yeah, yeah typically the the optimal approach is taking the most nutrient dense foods from all the different food groups so there's a system that quantifies how to do that now oh that's great I'm excited yeah I mean do you have future plans with optimizing nutrition I've got, oh, uh, you keep asking me that, but yeah, uh, yeah no, uh, the, the, there's just a muse that pops into my head at four o'clock in the morning when I wake up and I write a blog post. So, um, no, I, I, when the muse stops, I might write a book or, or, or document it somehow. And yeah. at the moment, it's just a, a fun journey and uh, right. it's going well. So, yeah, yeah I made a lot of really good friends. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> they come from America. Ah, I, I couldn't wait to meet you. <laughs> Here we are in this beautiful place. Hey. So, you're. Uh, the data, it's, it's a, you make it freely available to the public at this point. Well, I suppose there was a bit of a, a frustration that it took us. We had to go through two pregnancies of going, you know, managing type one, and you know, yeah. it's just frustrating that data, that information is not available for other people who are in our situation. Diabetes rips out the quality of life for so many people. So um, you know, it'd be nice if. We showed that there was a viable alternative that actually worked to, yeah. to refine your food choices. Yeah. So, so you're an engineer, right? Hmm. And um, I thought that engineers just built bridges. <laughs> Apparently, my <you've>, day. <laughs> yeah, but you do build bridges. Yeah, I do. Yeah. And, and, and I've some, built some bridges. And somehow you got interested in this nutritional yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's the same tools applied yeah. to nutrition. So it's just the same analytical tools that I learned as an engineer in that that thought yeah. process. So. Well, I think we were sitting on the beach today talking about how doctors don't quite think like engineers and, and that we need engineers to, yeah. to, to bring the data yeah. to us. It tends to be a, an associational sort of analysis and the engineers just seem to see different data and data in different ways and think graphically and find relationships between different parameters that are useful and applicable. So you just throw up a graph, does it make sense? What can I, how can I tweak that? How can I optimize that situation? Sure. So has this yeah. been helpful to you personally? Yeah, yeah. I mean, personally lost 10 kilos and quality of life has improved. And as mentioned yesterday, family history of diabetes and obesity. And uh, I just like thinking clearly is the main thing. And uh, that gives me the ability to think clearly. Yeah, well, you know, I really enjoyed your talk yesterday. Thanks, thanks. And it gives me a buzz when people get into it. Yeah, it, 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 absolutely. And I just wish that the rest of the world was more accessible to the people that live in Australia. <laughs> Internet's a big place. Yeah, so that's it a good place. Makes the world way, a very small place. You know, there's nothing like doing it in person. And so, you know, I felt it was important to come mm. and to oh, meet wow. with everybody. And Rod Taylor had been mm. bugging me for years. So maybe we yeah, can find yeah. a way to get get you and the Aussies over to the U.S. to yeah, some of yeah, these yeah, conferences. Yeah. That'd be cool. cool. Okay, Marty. Hey, thanks. Hey, thanks, man. Jeff. Thanks for coming over. See you next time. Cheers, mate. Bye. <laughs>